Right now we got Lawrence Cow, first podcast. We got the California Dreaming Podcast. I mean, at the same time, we got this amazing team here in the audience, just hanging out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 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 and man, it, it's just a pleasure to have this man on, uh, on this show because it's you know it's been a long time coming to have California Dreaming guy get off the ground. And about two years ago, it was just like an idea of having a guest come out and speak about their journey. Uh, whether it's their, their musician, an actor, man, a real estate agent, it doesn't matter, but they, they took themselves out of their comfort zone and took on the, the journey of the dream, whatever that dream is. And speaking of this uh, dream, this man, Lawrence Cow is uh, on his path right now, currently on his journey. You can actually find him on Wu Assassins on Netflix right now. Check it out. And he's playing Tommy... Wah. Tommy Wah. Yeah. Tommy Wah Wu Assassins. And it was his performance that kind of drew me in. And once I saw him perform, it was, uh, you know, it was incredible. <laughs> and it was so funny because I was on a binge watching spree of this thing and I took a break. And then went to the gym, and then I see this man. And I was like, "That's that's the dude. That's guy." I was like, "You can't, you can't be afraid." But I saw uh, you peripherally. You know, yeah. you were like looking. I was like, "Who's yeah, this guy? Like, Do I yeah, know him?" Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a pleasure and an honor to have him uh, on this uh, show. So man, uh, for man, sure, man. Appreciate dude. you, man. Blessings. Yo, thank you for having me, man. And like, I appreciate you even just coming up to me and saying what's up, man. For sure. Like, you know, a lot of people don't do that. You know, you just yeah. see people just. You know, watch like, it lurking. Watching, like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> look like so, Michael Myers in the corner. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it was cool, man. Like I, I appreciate it. No, that, I appreciate man. you receiving me in that in that in that way. You know I mean, some people be like, oh yeah, and then kind of brush it off like they didn't do something pretty tight. Like to yeah, me, yeah. It's, it's amazing what you're doing. For sure, you know, I, I want to spread that energy. You <laughs> yeah, know, like you know, and push people to do whatever they want to do too. You know, perfect, so. perfect. Uh, I guess we should start like, uh, what is your name, and you know what I mean, and what you want to kind of. Uh, my name is Lawrence Cow. Um, Where are you from? I'm from Hacienda Heights. Hey. That's, uh, it's near West Covina. If you guys are familiar with the area, uh, 626 area code, it's about like an hour away. Okay. An hour east. So closer um, to like downtown ish. Yeah. Or that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you get the beach as well. Totally. totally yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got the best of both worlds. Yep, Hop, yep. skip, and a jump. And uh, yeah, dude, I'm, uh, I'm an actor. Okay. Just a human being trying to do cool shit and yeah, know, spread man. positivity, man. So where did it, where did that start? Did it start with like you in school when you were younger, or you were watching a show one time? Well, what inspired that acting um, bug or gene? Or I acting? think it, it started in high school, but um, you know I used to hang around like not so good people in okay. high school, like just. You know, people that just like to cause trouble, and it was just sort of hard for me to really figure out what my identity was. Mm. And um, I don't know. My homie was like, "Yo, they they do these like after school like sketches. You should audition for it." And I was like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll do it." You know, and <laughs> you know, it, it allowed me to just be stupid on stage, That's and it sort of juxtaposed the this like this mask or identity that that I had, like this front of me trying to be like this specific person but it's just like no nah, man you can just do whatever the fuck you want people will laugh you know and uh you get to tell a story that's um you know just separate from you know what i was going through in high school and so i think that 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 sparked my interest and um yeah i just got really into like doing these sketches i i um auditioned for like some shakespeare play and and from then on, I just, you know, just kept doing it because I loved it so much. Wow, that's powerful. Mm. And, that, and that was what, uh, was when like, did you graduate? I was, like it's, I was 17, so okay. this was like two, 2002. Okay. 2002. And then I, I know, I was going to do a little bit of research, that you were on uh, America's Best Dance Crew, which was... I was. And you were with uh, Cabo Mata. Yeah. And so funny, because I used to watch... <laughs> Did I, you? I, yeah. That's like, so crazy. Yeah, America's Best Dance Crew. And I've seen the, those performances. Yeah. And I was like, the Jabberwocky era as well. Yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, man, I forget their, their name now. It's like, the, the, the sneaker girls. Uh, I can't even think of it. With the other, um, uh, fish and chicks? No. Sneaker I'll girls? Come to me. I'll come to I don't me. I'll come to me. I don't Michelle, remember. I didn't forget. I know she was on the <laughs> well. I'm like, oh, I'm drawing a blank. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, but, uh, tell me about that. Cause that, that was, that was a big platform. 
for a lot of uh, performers. I mean, especially for the dance. I mean, I put yeah, that definitely on the map. You um, know, and it put like I feel like Asian Americans on the map. Yeah, the map for sure. too, because like people were just like, whoa, I didn't know like bunch of Asians from Orange County could get together and dance like that. You <laughs> yeah, know? and you guys especially was like locking almost, right? It was like just popping, locking, yeah, like, yeah, just yeah, doing yeah. Lot, like a lot of fundamental fundamentals and stuff for and foundation. Sure. Um, How long were you doing that for uh, before the show? Uh, you just to dance? Like in college. I, I was in college and then I saw I saw like I didn't realize I went to UC Irvine I didn't realize like this college like had a bunch of cool ass dance teams like like <laughs> all over the place and so like they would do these like you know um performances and i i, I just watch them and be like man i want to i want to do that so i just tried to audition so you weren't for, dancing before no not really oh no no i mean i i, I like dancing i enjoy gotcha, dancing yeah, yeah, but yeah. i wasn't i wouldn't say i was a dancer mm -hmm. but you know it just it just caught my interest and i just i wanted to do it so i just pursued that while i was um studying theater and so um and that led me to potentially like um being on the show and um i got on the team not i i, I they i was a fluke because i was <laughs> terrible in the beginning okay. like straight up bad and i and people would tell me and then people would give me so much shit <laughs> for being on the team they're like why are you on the team and stuff yeah, yeah. Like, hey attitude's know. right facts don't count baby yeah dude <laughs> and I, I just you know i just pushed through because i love doing it yeah you know, I didn't really care if I sucked, but, you know, that's the only way you can get better. And so, huh. just kept fucking doing that. And um, eventually, um, I became one of the captains with uh, two other um, individuals on the team. And then, you know, things aligned. And then MTV was like, yo, we're doing this show. Do you guys want to... You guys want to join? Was it like a competition to get into it, or was it just like an audition? Or it was, was an it... audition. Okay. And then you know they did their research. They were like, yeah, there are all, there are all these like dance teams everywhere. And then they they um you know they auditioned people, and then we were one of the uh, groups that got yeah. on the show. You guys got pretty far too. Yeah, yeah. It that was, was uh, yeah, it was intense. It like, was cool, man. Yeah. Like during that time though, like I I don't think I really enjoyed the experience as much because. This is after I graduated, and my focus was like, you know, I wanted to be an actor. Gotcha. You know, I wanted so your to. Your focus was split. Kinda. Yeah, so I was doing something that my heart wasn't really into at at the moment. So during the show, I was just a little bit like taken back. Yeah, and I, I felt like I didn't want to be there, mm. which was interesting. It's an interesting place to be because, like, you know, my whole life I'm trying to get on TV, you know, but once I'm there and i'm doing something that my heart isn't really into in that moment i'm like fuck i don't want to be here so how'd you get through that um i just i just went through it in a, in a shitty fashion it was just <laughs> like man this sort of this sort of sucks but but if i look back at it now i should have embraced it more um, yeah what would you tell yourself yeah i would just tell myself to just enjoy the moment and uh, accept what is happening mm -hmm. and instead of like thinking so much into the future you know just embrace whatever it is yeah, right. yeah 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 we're already here you know <laughs> yeah. let's just fucking enjoy it man yeah, like stop yeah. worrying so much that's powerful. I think I think that that you know I think that's important especially in, in this kind of career because there's gonna be so many ups and downs you just have to accept the downs and just be like alright fuck it it so is what it is you you, you, you finish uh, MTV Mm -hmm. Obviously, they recorded that. Then they put it out, right? It wasn't live. It wasn't. Um, Does fuck, that make sense? I don't remember. I think it was live. Oh, okay. I think there were live tapings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they were, they were just shooting it out as it came. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so once it was done, you 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 finished college at that time, right? Yeah. Now it's time to. What was your next move? What was like that? What was that journey? You know what? The the next move was us getting like a bunch of opportunities to perform. Um, outside of the country mm. and to travel and, uh. and do these shows and like I, I didn't want to do it I got you but you know I, w I was there I was stuck <laughs> like in these beautiful places like Guam oh, Hawaii yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know traveling but not really enjoying my time to you know to its fullest potential mm. you know so um, yeah I did that a lot because it provided a lot of money mm. And so I guess with that money, um, afterwards I was just like, okay, this is enough. I gotta, I gotta go to LA. You know, I gotta, I gotta figure this shit out. You know, you know, it's it, it's it's not enough just to have like a theater degree. You know, you gotta really dip your toes into the industry in the for, for something to happen. You know. So once you 
got back to LA, you kind of like started taking classes yeah, or you started just, out, reaching out to like management. What would that? Just jumped into classes. Do? Yeah. Just jumped into classes. Your, uh, who did you go to? I went with? to this guy called Sal Romeo. Um, I'm sure he's big now. I just, he's I just in, got um, into it like two years ago. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. Do you take classes? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm over here at Two Rose Theater in, uh, nice. in Studio City right now. Cool. But still looking for like other places to kind yeah. of, you know, grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I think, you know, it's, it's important. It's like a gym, you know, like just Definitely. exercising, you know, your acting muscles. Yeah. Um, what would be considered an acting muscle if you were to explain an acting muscle? Um, I guess... Um, your ability to access your imagination okay. and um, your ability to, I guess, um, build circumstances very quickly and your ability to, to like be pulled in different directions depending on, um, you know, what a director wants from you. I think that's, um, I think that's what's important. Like if, if, if you're on set and um, you, you practiced how you would do something and someone tells you and something to do, do something else or they tell you like a, another story element and it takes you forever to even process that, okay. then it's just like, then you're, you're, you, you need to work on that, you know, whatever gotcha. that is. Yeah, yeah to make that. you just unshakable, huh. pretty much. Especially with so much going on. Yeah, totally, especially with so much going on, especially TV, man, they, they go quick. You know, they're telling you to do this. They change shit up. Like, you just have to be on your toes yeah. and uh, be confident in, like, your ability to tell this story. And you were in theater first. Yeah. And then went into film. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like? You know what? Um, I think they're so the same. You know, the only difference is that in theater, it's just one take. It's one shot, you know? I... I my philosophy is that, you know, when I'm doing film, I'm not thinking about acting for the camera. I'm literally just doing what I do in theater. You know, obviously if you're in a bigger theater and there are more seats, you obviously have to project more. But, you know, I think it's, it's basically the same thing. You know, you're just pretending to be this person, you know, telling the story. Yeah. Yeah. So pretending, you know, most people, <laughs> what's funny is, like, oh, you're an actor, you pretend. Like, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What, do you feel like pretending is faking it or do you feel like pretending is like something else? Like what is your definition or interpretation of pretending when you say pretending? Um, maybe it's... I feel like it's like a misconstrued uh, yeah, thought of totally, what acting totally. is. You know what it's mean? like, I Just think it's... Act like them, whatever. I think it's developing like strong beliefs about your your character and the people around you and um you know because everything is pretty much a belief you know even facts within the story there are just beliefs of what we think about um about the character or the circumstances so i think i guess it's just really believing what is going on i guess mm. You know, I mean, I guess pretend is not such a good word because, you know, it's sort of like I'm acting or I'm doing a performance, you <laughs> right, know, but yeah. I think I think it's really embracing where, you know, where you're at in that moment and um, just being truthful, yeah. believing everything you're doing, you know, like because, you know, if, if 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 you believe it, then, you know, the audience will. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I, I heard you mention that. Uh, I think when we were talking, yeah. you said when you're uh, when you you know when you're watching anything that you've done, you watch your eyes. Or that I don't really watch anything. I don't see what I'm doing physically. I I, I look at what I'm thinking about. Mm. So it's not I, it's not even watching my eyes okay, either. Okay. It's really just looking at oh what am I thinking in that moment? You know do I believe? Um, do I believe what that person is is saying? You know, it's not necessarily like, oh man, my my body moved like this, or I <laughs> I blinked too much. You know? I've been on sets where people like, I mean, it's it's a different philosophy. Some people think like, you know, you you have to face more to the camera. You you just gotta keep your eyes open. You know, like there's you know there's different trains of thought, but I I don't I don't believe in that. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I think I've asked you before, um, have you ever played a character or was offered a character? 
that you uh, necessarily didn't see eye to eye with or mm-hmm. didn't have the same beliefs because we talked about mm-hmm. you believing totally. in this uh, in this circumstance or you believing in what the script is telling you what the story is and yeah. you understand that this this story and this particular character's um, doesn't role, align with yeah but it doesn't things. align with what your beliefs are yeah. but it, the role itself moves the story along how, yeah. uh, have you felt like that and then how did you deal with that um, I think story is king so as long as the story is telling like something positive or if it's like you know um pushing like a positive narrative forward okay. then um i'll take the part you know what i mean and i i think like playing parts um uh parts of people who who, who are normally deemed like negative you know if you if people don't see this person in a in a in a positive light it's fun to play those characters because you can sort of like um pull out what it is to to be human mm. in that character you know pull out the different vulnerabilities about that person and you know like an audience member may, may see that character and be like man you know what normally in in real life I'd, i w- i would hate this guy you know but but because of this movie or because of this tv show i'm like you know what i can actually relate to him you know i could sort of understand him so i think there's a there's a beauty yeah it, you know I, our job as actors is to remind the audience of their humanity and that's why we go watch movies and stuff we sit there and we're like we, we're like man i'm human i can relate to that yeah. and i think that's really powerful is there a movie in mind uh, that you can think of at the top of your head that had you feel like that where it kind of moved you and you were like wow that's the impact of uh, that an actor could have on me or a film could have on me man um there's so many films there are so many films that that like moments where i'm like oh man that's crazy and that actor did that to me you know um I mean, Joker is a great example. Yeah. You know, you got you watch it, yeah, dude. So it's just crazy, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's 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 totally an example. It's just like it just explores human nature. For sure. And you know, this guy does terrible shit, but it's just like you know, you feel for him too. You know, like you sort of understand the psyche of someone like that. You know, and that's like the extreme too. You know what I mean? Is there um, any actor or actress or? film that kind of inspired you to keep going or you know to spark that interest in acting hmm. um it's so funny when people ask me this it's just so hard for me to pick a specific so person many. because like you know everyone's like everyone's <laughs> got different. yeah everyone's got their own like specific talents right gotcha. like or, or everyone is themselves like they have all their like um you know their their superpowers right and it's just like it's it's hard to decipher like who who is better you know what i mean so who would you put two and then what would be their superpower if you were to say that was a superpower man um i don't know joaquin phoenix if we just seen the joker movie what would be his uh, superpower that you feel that he kind of portrayed um I think just to be to really imagine what it is to 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 be in that paradigm. I feel like he's very open to that. Um, I think I think strong actors are ones that um, that um, whatever instinct they feel in that moment, they just go towards that, and there, there's no resistance. Yeah, and I feel okay. like he does that. You know what I mean? And I feel like. Um, like he speaks I don't know. up on it too. I was like yeah. watching like an interview, and they were talking about how the uh, was it Todd Phillips that, uh, that yeah directed, directed it, yeah. and him and Joaquin were in that bathroom scene right after the whole you know the whole transition of uh-huh. him killing that guy, and then it was just mm-hmm. like first it was supposed to be him going into the bathroom and hiding the gun and looking at himself in the mirror like what did I just do and just like panicking and mm-hmm. you know wiping off his face and like just like uh, what you know what a writer would write and mm-hmm. not necessarily kind of just oh yeah if I would have killed somebody I would have been ashamed of myself and I would hit this gun and I would have mm-hmm. but then Joaquin Phoenix stepped in and said you know I don't feel um, I don't feel that what was the character's name in the movie now? Um, I forget but his that his, yeah, character, his character would do that wouldn't do that mm. So then he just started doing this like dance that he yeah did, yeah yeah and yeah and that was just Woo! right 
it's uh it's stuff like that you know like yeah. uh not being afraid to um explore that creative freedom i think okay and um you know it's always hard like when people always ask me this question i'm like fuck i don't know and it's hard for even for me to even remember people's names yeah yeah <laughs> I, I just i literally remember performances and yeah. like you know so yeah uh, Okay, I need so, to sit down and write a list. No, you're good. <laughs> um, so we went from theater, we went to a TV. Mm-hmm. Here, uh, that 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 audition, that first audition that you, the, the one you booked. Mm-hmm. What did that audition feel like? Did you feel like you hit it on the money or you knocked it out of the park? And then getting that call, just that that yeah. feeling between that time. How did that? Feel? You're saying the first thing that yeah, I've ever first, booked. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, that? Because yeah, everybody's yeah, kind of yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. that moment, totally, but they totally. don't know how to feel or when it will totally. happen. How does it feel? And yeah. of course, everybody's experience is going to be different. Yeah, but it for was, you, I, I want to hear what your side of it is and how that feels. It was uh, it was a show called Franklin and Bash, and um, it was just a small part. You know, like um, maybe just one little paragraph. I just go in and, and say it. Um, this was like right in the beginning. I was practicing <laughs> practicing this shit like in front of like the mirror, like like recording myself, yeah. which I which I don't think is really good to do. So don't do that. Oh, you record yourself? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you really bad. Don't do that. Yeah. But <laughs> but you know like, um, I went in. I, I, did, I didn't I didn't I didn't think I <laughs> actually I don't know. I I might Dude, maybe in my old computer, but um, <laughs> that'd be funny to watch. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't think I was gonna get it, you know, like it's such a small part and it was just like, ah, eh, whatever. Um, but when my manager called me and told me, like, I was fucking ecstatic, man, because it's, it's like, you know, it's the first thing. It, it's like, uh, it's like a door towards possibility. Mm. You know, because the whole time you're thinking like, yo, will I, will I ever be able to even book anything? Yeah. And so just one little, like, nod is like, okay. Cool. It keeps you from, you know, it yeah. makes you continue the journey. Did you, what did you feel any shift or change in just like your demeanor? Not just a demeanor, but your um, your confidence kind of go up a little bit more. Or, totally, yeah, you know, of course, like, of course. Like you know, you I know just humble feel, yourself is one thing, but it's like also yeah, take you, you what need you can a, with that momentum or that. Totally, you, you have to be mean? positive and be like confident yeah. that like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. Like, what well, what's next? Yeah. You know. So you kept that ball rolling. What was that next thing after that? It was like, or was there like a time period where it was like, oh. Next thing? Um, I mean, I did a bunch of like student films, gotcha. just a bunch of shorts that, you know, people just wanted working. me to do. You're just working, work. you know? Yeah, I, think, I think you work. just got to continue to to fucking do shit, you yeah. know? Um, I think the, the next big thing was like Walking Dead. Oh, yeah? It was like for three episodes. Oh, sweet. You know what was funny though is that like you know you get the you get the sides but they're like bogus sides so they're like six pages so you think your character is like man this later character yeah, this yeah, is gonna legit. be great it's gonna be good. <laughs> and then um, that was a hustle too because um, my manager got me that audition because he knew an agent in Atlanta okay and the Atlanta agent was like will Lawrence work local hire. And I was like, fuck yeah, for sure. Yeah, in Atlanta. He's like, my manager's like, do you know anybody? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. (laughs) And so I just like, you know, I, I, I asked everybody, I went on Facebook. I was like, yo, does anyone have a house I can stay at or an address I can use? And my roommate at the time, his friends, twin sisters, (laughs) Dog's sister's walking. boyfriend. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, it was like four degrees of separation. Yeah, I don't know, but is, then but yeah. they were, but then they they knew me from uh, watching uh, ABDC. Oh, and they're like, hot. yeah, sure, have them crash at uh, at at our apartment. See, that paid off. And so it was like, okay, cool. And then, um, but like you know, it's it's hard because you you have to pay for your own flight. Gotcha. You have to not let them know that you're not you're local. you're not local. Mean, yeah. You got to go there. You got to rent a fucking car for like what, mo- like three months, and then um, I didn't realize how far set would be from where you're staying. From where I was staying, and um, Man, they would cool. call me and be like, "Hey, well, we got to do a costume fitting for you, like soon, like right like now. like right now." <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, "Fuck!" And then so I just leave, you know. I go, I get a car, and then I realize like, you know, it takes two hours to drive a set. So I was driving like I was waking up at like three in the morning. 
driving my ass down to like really south and then and not knowing hustling. where you're at because you're obviously no not knowing at all man yeah. it's crazy you're just thank god for navigation that fucking oh shit. yeah <laughs> man <laughs> if like if, if this was back in the day i'd be fucked yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totally. It's a guy p- pulling an axe. <laughs> I, I stopped by a gas station too, oh, yeah, and they the, have this drawl the gas when they're talking yeah. in, in the in the deep south. I couldn't really understand him too, oh, so it was like, yeah, it's like you know, and especially if, you know, it's so early in the morning, it's so dark. Right around here, right? yeah, you're walking into a show with a bunch of zombies, you know. Oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, you try to ask somebody for directions. Uh, it's like hella method for no reason. <laughs> Awesome. But yeah, but yeah, okay. man, that that was that was cool. I was so excited about it. Yeah, and that was uh, a big show at that time. Still a big show totally, today. I mean, totally syndicated for sure. So it's like having that like on your IMDb. Like I get excited for like what could be on, uh, potentially on my yeah, IMDb. yeah, yeah, totally. And <laughs> so it's like when I hear somebody book something again, like I, you know, I was talking shit a little bit before, but it's more like if anybody that's on TV right now, it doesn't matter. It, be the the nurse right there mm. the whoever the right hand they worked hard to get that totally totally anybody that's on screen for even 10 seconds yeah even if you're you a stenographer yeah you can't take that away from them <laughs> you man. can't take no. that away from them that they put in the work they put in i mean look at you but some people put more work than others and that's gonna show in the result right yeah i mean look you, you, you told me exactly what you just did where you reached out to people you said yes with uncertainty of yeah. will I be able to stay somewhere you just gotta be a yes man in the beginning man just and say like happen. just make it happen man just keep Money doing it is necessary um, and it ultimately led you to the next show what would be that I guess it would just be a bunch of like um procedural shows like uh, Hawaii Five-0 NCIS okay. NCIS LA was NCI- that, that was guest starring or like recurring um, or it was, they were like large co-stars. Oh, sweet. In my mind, I felt like, man, this is a guest star, but they're giving me <laughs> co-star credit, but whatever, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my first guest star was uh, NCIS uh, Los Angeles, and that was in like... Um, that's big too, that's, a, that's another name, like, especially in Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure your friends and family were like, oh, bro, yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, excited. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, that, that, that was another, I feel like, uh, a, a stepping stone um, towards more things because you know the, the whole time I was booking like these co-stars these small co-stars and I'm like man am I ever gonna break that wall okay and you know tap into like doing guest stars so that's a legitimate concern yes yes for sure because you can get stuck doing a bunch of co-stars your whole life do you, you know have I mean? an idea of how that would happen and um, what do you mean like how does that happen like it just you, to get stuck is this just more of a mindset or is it more of like you keep um, saying yes to these co-star or guest star. I think it's, I don't know. It's just, a, I guess it's just the fear that that will happen. Oh, okay. I think it is mindset, yeah. you know? I don't think, I don't think a co-star is less than anything else, you know? Fuck, I'll still take one. It yeah. doesn't really matter, you know? But, um, you know, there's just that, it's just like, <laughs> man, am I ever going to tap into the next level, you know? Yeah. But that's what makes it fun, though, too. You know, because if we got everything so quickly, you'd just be like, eh whatever true you know what i mean i think there's like excitement in this pursuit you know so uh did that because we were moving to get to where you got to with assassins which is amazing because that's a very substantial role that you yeah. play and it's, a, it's an incredible character right before that you were on originals i believe yeah when that was uh, a reoccurring that was recurring yeah yeah and you played and that was that was another tap into um something else too to to, to get a recurring part. Mm. I played a, uh, this witch called Ban. His name is Ban. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And nah, yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen that episode. It was uh, like yeah. just a couple of them. And what you play, I mean, I feel like who you are is who you play right now. Mm. And you're just this awesome dude. Who, you know <laughs> what I mean? And when they put you in there, it's like that's how they cast right now. Like that's what I've learned from like coaches and people telling me like mm-hmm. right now you, you're not gonna be a character actor you're gonna kind of just play you amplified mm-hmm. and i feel like that's everybody in any industry whether it's music yeah dude um, you know just finding that voice a comedian is the same thing it's like it's gonna be you mm-hmm. amplified for a while until... for sure for sure and you know what even even if you look at character actors you know like they are them too you know they're yeah, just like true. in a hyper uh in a hyper circumstance, yeah. you know, where things are just True, elevated, like, uh, you know. Dustin Hoffman as Hook. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, I didn't even realize it doesn't yeah, until I was like, I love that movie. So there, was man. Like, there was like a, what was it? A, um, like an interview or, or like a biography or something like that. And I was like, what? That was doesn't happen. I was like, I, 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 like, it just baffles me. Yeah. The that you can put a costume on or put you know and then embody that and just take on a role mm-hmm. and you won't even think that's you or who that is. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is that guy? Have you ever played a character and you're like, man? That is not me, but that's true because that's me, but that's not me. Um, I guess it would be only like like if I was doing like funny videos with my homies and okay. stuff. Yeah, just like small small sketches I like on of YouTube. I yeah. see you uh, with Timmy the uh, oh, yeah. the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, with the stare. The, the which one? The, when you guys are tied up. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bully one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was like, you know, that was that was a point in time when I wasn't really booking anything too, and I was just like, you know what, fuck it, I gotta do something. You know, okay. this, this is when you know I got creative with my friends and we just started making stuff. Yeah, I think that's important too, you know, to exercise that muscle too when things get slow. Yeah, create the opportunity. Yeah, and do you feel uh, in doing that when you start to work, like things start to come your way? Totally. Yeah, totally. I felt that too. Like, yeah, when you start to like. You got to find your groove. When yeah. you find your groove, then things start, yeah, things start coming. So you get the originals, uh, you start going out, you get this, was it the pilot for, what was the next, is it Wu Sass's next, or what was next after that? Um, uh, more guest stars here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a couple more co-stars. In between, I still do theater too, so I oh, was doing sure. like theater at um, South Coast Repertory. Are you still doing that to this day? Um, like auditioning for like theater yes, or do you wait yes. for like an offer or yeah. if you see something I saw audition for, for theater stuff okay right on and you're represented across the board right now um, I just have a manager and a theatrical agent okay um, and that yeah that I mean that's really all you need right now right like, yeah. yeah I think so yeah yeah but then the team starts to build itself as you keep continuing on yeah 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 you, you, like eventually you'll need like publicist yeah. lawyer whatnot yeah. what, what do you what do you feel you stand right now in your own eyes mm-hmm. uh in in your career right now like, man i think i'm it's still the beginning man yeah i think it's still the beginning this is just tapping into like this is tapping into like another level but it's still down here you yeah. know what i mean i'm still like learning a lot like figuring out how yeah you're in how, the game though that's, yeah that's, that's what's crazy it's that's like, what's fun though it's yeah. fun it's like uh yeah i'm in the game you're i'm not sitting game, on the bench sure. like put me in it's just like yeah all right where's the ball yeah you know yeah get those reps in yeah get those reps in. that's that that's why you know <clears throat> where i'm at right now it's like i'm not even in that game yet I, you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm you know doing things here and there but i'm just you know, I'm, a, I'm working an amateur, out on I'm, the yeah, sides. I'm yeah. an amateur fighter in Mexico. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> okay, it's the things under my belt, so that when I, you know, get in, you know, the SAG or mm-hmm. whichever, and something, then it's like, okay. You do stand up? Yeah, I do stand up as well. Uh, I, I've kind of put it in the back burner for a couple mm-hmm. since I started with acting. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. To balance the totally, two. Totally, totally, totally. Challenge, just like what you're saying with like dancing and yeah, acting, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to make a choice, and yeah. you have to make a choice. Totally, and man. I was doing stand up for nine years. Damn. But yeah, but I, I, felt... I have mad respect for people that do stand up, <clears throat> man. That shit is. <laughs> That shit's fucking scary, man. Oh, dude, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's and an it, animal that I, I could see relate. It co- coincides in the correlations with acting. Mm-hmm. I say um, auditioning is open mic because you have a certain amount of time, three mm-hmm. to five minutes, yeah. to showcase what you got, and you're either gonna be hitting it mm-hmm. or you're not. Yeah, you're either gonna be feeling you that day or not. Yeah, comedy is a live sport. It's like any other sport that's live. It's any given Sunday. You either gonna be on point or you're not. Yeah, it's fucking intense, you know what man. I'm saying? At least when you're when you're filming, it's different. Yeah, you know I mean, you got yeah, your you editor that like, makes you look good. You can even be like lying, <laughs> call fucking. Yeah, line. yeah you go, all right. We, well, let's take another yeah. take. I mean, depending on how much film or how much uh, you know no. uh, card you still have, but no. yeah, but but when you're live, I guess you can have postcards. I guess you can. <laughs> or you can be like, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Mitch Hedberg. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, not Daniel Day Lewis. Um, Make him enough that you can't refuse. Oh, I'm um, blanking out his name. Um, <laughs> now you got me. Um, it's contagious. See, I told you. It's hard, man. It's hard to remember names, man. We're, we're getting older, yeah, dude. Yeah, we're definitely getting older. Yeah. But, but what I'm getting at is uh, the correlations because in stand-up, it, you, you, 
you have to be in the trenches, man. You yeah, have, man. You have to put in the work. I mean, do you see anybody that just got a guest spot on, you know, Conan or anything like that? They earn that spot. Totally. You can't be like, oh, I'm funnier than that guy. Cool. Okay. You can be the funniest person. A lot of people just talk. You yeah. Know? They say this, like, yeah. this should be this. Yeah. They have their Same own thing opinions with the about stuff. As well, yeah. Or whoever. Anybody in any game could say, I'm sure there's way better players than fucking Steph Curry or Michael Jordan or whoever. Yeah. But have never stepped foot on the court. Totally, yeah. And I'm sure there's better actors than anybody that have never, never or will it, ever yeah. be on that stage or in front of that camera or uh, perform that. So anybody that's in, that's why I, I like California Dream and, and what the concept is, is somebody who wants that. Somebody who is, you know, has this uh, dream or this feeling in their in their in their gut that like man I really want to try that I want to do that and going with that excitement mm-hmm. I was talking to my buddy earlier today and it was like there's people that follow the money mm-hmm. or they follow the excitement and essentially if you follow the excitement the money will come because totally. you're passionate you're doing stuff yeah, like, the wow, money will people, come people will pay you to be that excited about what you do because you're passionate about it mm-hmm. but there's also that other opportunity where it's like oh you could be the manager at this place that you've been working at for the last 10 years trying to uh, as your side hustle and you're just like you know what I'm just going to take the promotion in this job as opposed to promoting yourself in your passion or promoting yourself in your career and doubling down on what you're good at. Totally, man. I agree, man. So, I mean, with that being said, it's like, if you were to tell me anything that the segment I want to call is called Saved by the Dream, where you're down and out or you're just like, you know, you're just... You know, because everybody's human, and they get, get in that space, that rut, that that uh, you know, when it's slow out there, mm-hmm. or when things aren't coming your way. Is there anything, an event, or something, where the dream itself kind of got you out of that rut, got you out of that space, whether it's a spiritual thing or a mental thing or a physical um, thing? Yeah, I think it's just uh, it's a it's a definitely a mental, spiritual thing, you know. To, to realize that you know it, it's it just takes time like sitting there and thinking about how shitty things are to mm-hmm. like come to the realization that it's like you know you should just accept where you're at and really embrace it you know I feel like when when we're so like um, I feel like when I was so like like not happy with where I was at um, that's when things were not coming. You know, when I, when I was just like, man, this, this sucks. I, I got to work harder. I got to do this. I got to do that. My mind kept spinning about like spinning towards things that I needed to do. I need to do this. I need to be there, mm-hmm. you know, but I feel like when I slowed things down and I was just like, you know what, this is, this is where I'm at. Let's work from here instead of working from like all over the place. Yeah. That's when like things started like, okay. And when know. did you have that epiphany or that cognition and that realization? And if you can remember that moment, was there something that happened right after that? Whether mm. it was days or a month right after that? What, you know what I mean? Maybe someone came to you with an idea. Yeah, it pro- I don't think it was necessarily like something that, that clicked. It was probably like a moment in my life. I was just, I was living in this like really shitty apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like bed bugs. Oh shit. It was fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, it was on Rampart Boulevard. I don't know if you guys know where the that area though. is. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I remember telling my mom where I was living, and oh, she yeah. sent me like this. Like she, her friend, like used to work in the police force, like on for Rampart uh-huh. Boulevard, and then they, they were like, "Yeah, get Lawrence to move out of there. Like you gotta get him out of there." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that really, I think kind being of that there, desperation, kind of. Yeah. That, that I don't want this anymore. Yeah. I want that. Like being in the, such an opposition. Yeah, it made me feel like I want this and I don't want this anymore. <laughs> yeah. But like because of that, that at opposite pull, yeah. I I had it's to like embrace. Yeah. I had to embrace where I was. Yeah. I had to Ground be like. Zero. I'd be like, oh, this, this is rock this, bottom. This is, this is it. Yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. I, I concur with you in that whole thing because mm-hmm. I, I I was in that same situation literally a year ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you get out of it? What was uh, your same thing? thing. I mean, yeah. we, we we lost power. We lost water. We we. My buddy, he was there. It was it, yeah. was, it was a horrible situation. Like, um, it, it made me grow up really quickly because there was a lot of bl- uh, sh- uh, blame shifting. Yeah. Uh, nobody taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, here I am. 
I have to be the man of my life and get myself out of this. It helped that I had a dog at the time. I was yeah. like, shit, I gotta get you out of this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Maybe I could duke it out, but I was like, yeah, I have yeah, my yeah, dog yeah. Uh, in this situation. But it, it, once I got to, yeah, this is horrible, I started making minor adjustments, whether it was cleaning up the place, uh, putting uh, things under my name. Yo, I think that stuff is important too. Like handling like small business, like small things here and there. For like, sure. like, like, get, keep, keeping your things in order yeah that's gonna help you organize creative it. yeah totally i learned that too like, yeah, like man. you're not gonna be able to create because you're, you're constantly in survival mode yeah you yeah, can't yeah. thrive in survival mode you got to get rid of the clutter yeah and then just be like okay make sure you, you you're focus. set uh on a living situation if you're coming out to wherever you're going that's yeah. like the biggest thing right it's like once you get out and you get out of your comfort zone the first thing you should start doing is learning how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation totally start to be able to be comfortable on a, trying to balance on that ball. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to, you know, get your income right, get your yeah. your living situation, have a roof over your head and food in your belly and that minimum, Yeah. that minimum. And it's just, it's funny though, because like the only way you can sort of get there is to be uncomfortable. Right. So you sort of like, you sort of go into it and then you're like, you just got to face the fucking tides, man. Yeah. It's just like, you know. And that's going to separate the... Yeah, the boys from the men, or the women, or the girls from the women. Totally, and, man. All right, before totally. this, we wrap up in the next five, seven minutes, mm -hmm. uh, a couple things I want to touch on. This is uh, 2019 going to 2020. In the last year, of probably even more, um, there's been a lot more Asian awareness in, in, in Hollywood and being of Asian. What, what, what's your background? I'm Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. Okay, and being of a, a Asian background and being... <laughs> in uh, the uh, you know the foothold of Hollywood not foothold but you know being there mm. in the belly of the beast <laughs> um, what do you feel is um, the importance of um, representation of Asian Americans or just anybody of any yeah race? dude I think it's so important any, any person of color to be represented on TV man you just you just don't realize how important it is until like um until you see someone like you on screen or like in, in a situation that you know you don't you just don't normally see yeah you know like even me growing up when i see someone that looks like me it's so bizarre for me and i was you know i always thought to myself why is that weird why does it make me feel weird to see like myself you know what i mean it's like because you know we're just so programmed to seeing like how how we want to see the world you know and so i think you know, I think it's it's really powerful to to show people that you know there there are there are more kinds of people out there. You know, it, it creates empathy. Yeah, I think that's super important. And um, even in on you know on Wu Assassins, you know, like it's it's um it's predominantly Asian cast. And you you follow this group of kids growing up, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I was I was talking to I this guy that that um, an Asian American dude that grew up with. Uh, um, but predominantly Caucasian friends okay. and so when he saw like a group of like Asians hanging out and getting older together he was like what the fuck and it, t <laughs> it touched him it was yeah. like wow I've never felt that before because he's never seen it he never understood it and so you know I think it opens doors and it, it opens eyes the eyes um, you know of, of people watching and I think yeah. New stories. Are yeah, told, new man. stories, man. Yeah. I, I think everyone, uh, everyone needs to have the opportunity to, you know, express their own stories. You yeah. know, and relate, and yeah, see themselves in other characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can see yourself as a superhero. You can yeah. see yourself as, you know, a lawyer or whatever the case may be. Uh, crazy rich Asian. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> totally, man. Yeah. Um, is there, if there was a, if, you know, obviously, if you had the pick of the litter. Any role that you could, you know, be, what would that be? Um, I mean, I would, it would have been awesome to play like a Jesse Pinkman in Breaking Bad. Okay. That would have been fucking, that's like, <laughs> when I watch that shit, I'm like, that's like fucking dream role. Something like that. Gotcha. Yeah, I love stuff like that. Just what great like shit. About that? Um, just, you know, like his... You know, he's a character that, that, like, you know, he's a fuck up, but, you know, he's still human. You know, there are vulnerabilities to him. You know, he's got, you know, there's a lot of, like, uh, comedic relief with his character, too. Sure. Like, 
Yeah, I just started watching I, Breaking Bad. Oh, you just started? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, because you want to catch you want to catch up to watch the no, movie. Honestly, it was just uh, <laughs> I, I was just captivated by that too, but I was yeah. just captivated by uh, the first pilot. Yeah, I, I, you know, I wish. I, Dude, keep somebody, watching. If somebody goes. You need to watch this. I don't yeah, watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I totally I understand. I understand. <laughs> so he's like my brother or somebody. You're like, you need. I'm like, I, I hate when people tell me to do stuff when I want to do this yeah, yeah, thing yeah, already because yeah, yeah. it just it. makes me not do it. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, but Fuck. now that everybody's like kind of like already done with yeah, it, yeah, you're I'm like, like, all right, I'm, I can tap into it. So now. once I put on that first pilot, it snatched me yeah, up and yeah. I'm like, I get it. I, Yo, I see exactly what it, you know. It's and good. Now that I'm getting into the acting world, I mean, when I started stand up, I literally would watch stand up and find out who influenced who. I would Google mm-hmm. or you. No, nah, I was no Google at the time, but like I would like Yahoo or like uh, look up. You go know, to the library. Yeah, yeah. Go to the library. <laughs> get the Dewey Decibel. Yeah. But um, yeah, find out where stand up came from. What is the essence? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, the spirit yeah. of acting now? What is who influenced who? Who is uh, uh-huh. You know who is that influence, and why is this exactly? You know what I mean. So watching all these things and seeing, and that's why I'm saying why when I met you and watching your performance on Wu Assassins and how I was like, wow, this guy. And I, I didn't know who you were. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like I was just like, I instantly IMDb'd. You know what I'm saying? I, I do that now. Like I'm like, who is this? <laughs> that's like, like the the actor Facebook, right? Yeah, and I was just like, who is this guy? And like, I was like, oh man, this guy's tight. Like you're. Uh, you're and I just want to say thank you again for sharing your um, your talent, and I'm glad that you have a platform to do that. And again, you're at the forefront in a in a in a movement that you may not even be aware of, but right now is a pivotal time for uh, actors in general because of like Hulu and Netflix. Totally. And, uh, we got Facebook creating yeah, that stuff. Yeah, there's so now. much there's stuff, so, so much, much opportunity, man. Yeah. And you kind of being in the forefront of that season right that new level of I'm right behind you I'm just, you know what I mean I'm like oh because I'm, I'm following people that keep going I, yeah, man keep running keep going, you know, it's, a, it's a long game man yeah. like it's not long over game. until it's over yeah um, yeah if, if there's anything you want to uh, say that you feel like you haven't been able to say yet or um, you know maybe there's it was just a pleasure man to be able to chat with you man because yeah. you know I don't even we just we just met at the gym for know? sure just yeah, yeah. super that's random that's how it works man <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it man yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> shit like, like that you gotta keep it up here oh, yeah. I appreciate sure, you man sure, yeah we'll sure. hang out and uh, yeah man that's yeah dude happens. we should grab drinks sometimes yeah for yeah. sure uh, check them out Wu Assassins Netflix original right now on your Netflix Binge watch that. Do it. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, follow my man at Lawrence uh, Cow. I am Lawrence Cow. I am Lawrence Cow. Lawrence spelled L A W R E N C E K A O. Yeah, and I'm, I am. I sure put that on some yeah. screen somewhere. It'll, it'll, it'll pop up right <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Not right here. Not right. <laughs> all right, all right. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, yeah. Take care, man. Keep going. That's the, that's the movement. Keep fucking going. California Dreaming. <laughs>